Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Wolf Packer Show. My name is Ethan McDowell. I am your host, and I am joined, as I am every week, by Noah Fleischman. We are coming to you after a win for the Wolf Pack. NC State defeated Northern Illinois 24 to 17 in a defensive battle. Yes, that's right, a defensive battle. Music to the ears of some Wolf Pack fans who have had to watch the Wolf Pack give up 50 points to Tennessee and Clemson. The defense on every level took a significant step forward Saturday. They held a really solid Huskies team that you know defeated a fifth-ranked Notre Dame squad earlier this year to um, under 300 total yards and really, really shut them down in the second half, only allowed three points in the second half to preserve a seven-point win for the pack. It wasn't pretty at points, Noah, but it was a win. It was a much-needed win, and NC State improves to 3-0 at home this season inside the friendly confines of Carter-Finley Stadium. We're going to break down all of our thoughts on the win, some areas where we're very encouraged by the progress, some areas where we're, we are concerned by the regression that we saw. But before we do that, a quick shout out that we're both writers for the Wolfpacker.com. That is NC State's site on the On3 network. Whether you're looking for college football, basketball, or recruiting news, it's all on there. Go check out the Wolfpacker.com right now. You'll get access to our premium message board, recruiting scoops. NC State had a couple of official visitors on campus for football and one for men's basketball as well. So we'll have updates on all of that over the next few days. And of course, we have our team analysis, our interviews with the players and the coaches after games. It's all up there on the wolfpacker.com. So if you're not a member already, if you don't check out our re website regularly, I encourage you to do so. We're going to talk about our takeaways and some analysis on this podcast. But we get way more in depth on the website. So go check out thewolfpacker.com. Okay, Noah, let's talk about this seven-point win for NC State. Um, NC State's three and two. If you had told me before the season that they were going to be three and two, I'd be like, all right, yeah, that sounds about right. You know, lose, losing those two big games, Tennessee and Clemson, and winning the other three. The path to get here would have been a little more surprising. Um, this result was a little bit closer to what I was expecting from the defense this season. NC State nearly doubled its tackle for loss total on um, Saturday afternoon. They recorded 12 tackles for loss. They came into this game with 15, so much more disruptive. They recorded four sacks, which actually doubled their season total and forced four turnovers. Let's start by talking about the positive side of things. No, let's talk about the defense. What stood out about the Wolfpack's defense Saturday that uh, impressed you? Yeah, I think it goes off those tackles for a loss number. It just shows they're getting penetration, getting into the backfield. And they're doing this against a quality offensive line. Yeah. You know, Northern Illinois is a team that did not give up a sack this year. This is the first time they've given up a sack. They even four. As you say, got push, you know, basically the entire day. They had three tackles for a loss in the opening drive, setting the tone for what this defense was going to do all day. And I think that that really impressed me a lot. It showed that this defense can evolve. It can grow when challenged. Now it's just all about keeping that consistency, you know, going week to week. But it proved they can do it, and I think that's a step in the right direction because the first four weeks, Ethan, this defense just looked meh for the most part. It, it wasn't doing a whole lot. It was forcing a few turnovers here and there, but not to the, the level we expected. And then against Northern Illinois, four turnovers forced, two picks, two fumbles recovered by the defense. They really did it all. And honestly, the defense won this game for NC State. It, it led yeah. to 14 points. And again, NC State won by seven. There's your difference in the game right there. Yeah, I mean, the offense scored 10 points that wasn't weren't a direct result of a turnover, right? Of course, DK Kaufman had his play that was a, a sack, a forced fumble, a fumble recovery, and a touchdown. He told us after the game, this is the first time he has scored two touchdowns in a season since his senior year of high school. So shout out to DK for another, you know, just – havoc causing performance where he was all over the field and also credit to um, the defensive staff for a well-timed blitz there for the safety, but they were just, they did a really good job making Northern Illinois super one dimensional. This is a one dimensional team. I will say they, they are entirely focused on the rushing ability of Ontario Brown, a really, really talented running back. Yes. He is in the group of five level, he could play pretty much anywhere. He is a really, really solid running back, and, and he had a good day. 
He carried the ball 28 times for 114 yards, broke off a 30 plus yard run at one point. But NC State made things difficult for him. I think the biggest thing that stood out for me over the Tennessee and um, Clemson games, and honestly, the Western Carolina games at points, is that that in state wasn't making things difficult for opposing offenses. It, it looked they were running through tackles, they were finding receivers wide open downfield, and um, opening up huge holes. and And just keep and the thing that we've harped on throughout the past couple of weeks, Noah, is that in state was just not able to stop offenses behind the line, keeping them in unfavorable down and distances. No, teams were ahead of the sticks. They were in second and third in short situations. And that makes things near impossible from a pass rushing perspective. And that was the biggest difference today. NC State was winning on first and second down. And I think that was the main difference from this performance. Um, at first, Northern Illinois was having some success through the passing game. Ethan Hampton was 7 of 10 for 105 yards in the first half. They were finding some guys downfield, especially in the play action game where in-state was so sucked in and focused on stopping Brown. But, you know, when in-state built its double-digit lead at one point, they had to start to throw the ball more. And when that happened, in-state took advantage. Hampton finished the day with 159 yards, so that's only 54 yards in the second half. One touchdown, two interceptions, and three fumbles. Only lost two of them, but three fumbles – so just the defense was just causing so much havoc. And the natural question is, what changed, Noah? What changed in this defense? And I think for me personally, it just starts with there was just more urgency. I think they were playing faster. It was this, they were playing at a speed that I think we really only saw in this have seen in the second half against Louisiana Tech in that comeback win. That this was a level of player that we just haven't seen this unit consistently reach. And um, it's hard not to credit some of the personnel changes they made on that side of the ball, right? KJ Martin slots in at strong safety. Isaiah Shirley slots in at defensive end. And Tamarcus Cooley starts at nickel. All of their first starts of their Wolfpack careers. And they played really well, man. They did. They all three played really, really well. And I was really impressed with like a guy like Isaiah Shirley didn't play – I think at all on defense a year ago, he played at some tight end. You know, you can play both ways as that blocking tight end. But at defensive end, he was impressive. You know, he had the tackle for a half a tackle for a loss on the opening series with Brandon Cleveland. I was like, all right, Isaiah Shirley here is here to play. You know, his numbers aren't don't pop off the page. Three tackles, half a half a tackle for a loss. But you know, the the impact he made was really palpable. Yeah. Then you talk about KJ Martin. I mean, this guy seven tackles, Ethan. He did have a tackle for a loss and a pass defended, but his biggest impact of the game was just doing his job in run defense, which was big at safety, fitting the run perfectly, making basically every tackle. I don't think he had a missed tackle. If he did, it was minimal, and NC State was able to clean it up in a hurry. And it's Marcus Cooley. You know, he was impressive. Five yeah. targets at nickel. He only gave up one reception, a 20-yard gain, but made the tackle after one yard. So that was, you know, that shows that he's on the spot. It just, sometimes just a good play. You just got to make the tackle. He had three passes defended, though, on five targets. That's That's something else. I think all three of these guys will keep their jobs for another week. I think they impressed enough that Dave Doran can can keep them there in the spots. He talked about competition, brings the best out of it, out of players, and it brought the best out of these three guys that have been itching to get on the field. And when they did, they made their impact uh, felt pretty big. And they all played the most snaps that they've played all year. So it's impressive, and we'll see what they do moving forward, going back in the ACC play. Um, but this is heck of a start against a quality NIU team. I don't think anyone should discount, you know, what this is. It is a group of five team, but teams in the group of five, as much as people don't want to admit it, are closer to an NC State than NC State is to Alabama. And that's just a fact. And you got to win games like this. And that's what they did. And I'll say it because we saw it last weekend with North Carolina getting blown out at home to a group of five team. It's just kind of that where we are in college football. Yeah, I mean, it's. It's a good win. It, it wasn't pretty. Like, we're, like, we're going to dive into the offense, folks. I know. I know. We've been very positive on the show. Don't worry. We agree. The offense was bad, and we're going to talk about it. But it's a good win regardless just because um, that was a losable game. That is certainly a game NC State could have lost if the defense didn't step up like 
it did. We had we hadn't seen anything that indicated the defense was capable of a performance like this. It was a performances like that were the norm for NC State for a little while. Um, for the past couple of years, really, outside of a couple performances last year, it was standard to see the defense dominate like that. And um, we thought it was going to be a year where the offense was going to have to carry a lot more of the load because the defense was struggling. And this game kind of just felt like we were covering the 2022 or 2023 Wolf Pack, where the offense could not get anything going. And I think that's a good enough segue to talk about it. Now, let's talk about the offense. Um, the Wolf Pack scored 24 points. Like we said, only 10 of those were not the direct result of a interception or I guess just two fumble recoveries, right? So the pack started its game with an eight play 64 drive, 64 yard drive, ending in a touchdown, a rush by CJ Bailey. Two long passes to Noah Rogers on that drive, who ended up as the leading receiver for the day. For the rest of the game, NC State did not have a drive that lasted more than five plays. That is pretty ridiculous, in all honesty. Like that, they had no, they did not have a drive that went more than five plays or traveled more than thirty-six yards. So a- after this opening opening drive, again, eight plays, sixty-four yards. That was pretty much all of the offensive su- success for the day. There was one more field goal drive, and that was it. It was a day where. And I'm, I've been trying to think of how to phrase this all morning, though. It's almost like the the offensive performance was, you know, by design, you know? Like, it was almost intentional that they, they weren't really tr- – they weren't very aggressive. They weren't aggressive at all as the game went on. They, they threw the ball five times in the second half. I mean, like, that, that they were content to let the defense carry the program to this win. And, you know, it – it's been a winning strategy for NC State before, and it was a winning strategy on Saturday. But it led to some ugly, ugly football. NC State averaged 0.9 yards per rush in the second half. None of the running backs recorded more than 23 yards, and um, the longest run of the day was 12. That It was a really, really bad day for NC State's offense. Um, Noah, what did you th- see on that side of the ball? Yeah, I think it was. And I do think they got content that the defense was playing at, at, at an elite level that they could stop Northern Illinois. They only gave up three points in the second half. I think they realized, you know what, just lean on the defense and let them do their thing, which wins games. And it's not going to make people happy outside the program because it's not a sexy way to win a game. But a win is a win. And I think that's what Dave DeWarren's approach is. And he's not shy about saying that a win is a win. Um Yes, they, they had eight yards of total offense in the third quarter, I believe. It just was kind of one yeah. of those games where it just wasn't going well. C.J. Bailey, yes, he missed some of the throws, 13 of 20 for 108 um, and a touchdown. Did not turn the ball over, though, which I think is a step in the right direction. He had turned the ball over in each of the two games he played before. Uh, so that's that's a step in the right way. NC State didn't fumble or didn't lose a fumble in the game. C.J. did fumble it once, but they got it back. Um, it was just a botched snap that they wrote the jump on top of. Just overall, though, the offense, look, I like, I like what they showed in the first series. They went to Noah Rogers twice. He had a 34-yard gain, part of that, 48 yards. He led the team receiving, was only targeted three times, only had two receptions in the opening drive. <laughs> yep. They didn't touch the ball after the first series, and, and that just shows how you know ineffective the offense was. It's by design, I guess, but – Kevin Concepcion, four, for four receptions, four yards, one touchdown. He had more yards after the catch than he finished the total yards, which tells you kind of how things were going um, for him. But he got back in the end zone, first time in his career with just one touchdown uh, when he does score. So I think overall the offense got a lot of work to do, and that's just that's a fact. Um, they kind of regressed. We talked about it earlier in the week, like avoid a regression. Um, with this young quarterback and a young position, you know, a lot of young skill players around him, um, but they weren't able to do that. Um, but luckily for them, Tony Gibson's unit rose up to the occasion. So a lot of work to be done, Ethan. And I mean, they still don't have a bye week for a few more weeks. So they still have to do this on the fly with Wake Forest coming to town on Saturday. Yeah. I mean, frankly, I expected some sort of step back just because we talked about it on the preview episode. There's film on CJ now. Like, 
the teams have stuff to study to stop him. And I just didn't expect this much of a step back. It is worth stating that Northern Illinois, again, is a very good group of five defense. They have not given up 200 yards passing in a game so far this year and have been really, really solid. And they continued that streak. NC State converted one third down in this game. One, one for 11. Um, they finished with 176 yards of total offense. According to ESPN, that's their fewest in a win since 1999. So we've talked over the years, we've talked about quite a few wins where the defense has carried the offense. They carried the offense more in this game, maybe than any other of those victories. So, man, I mean, the Wolfpack need to find a way to unlock their playmakers. Uh, Doran mentioned in the post-game press conference that they're asking a lot of C.J. Bailey. I completely agree. It is asking a ton of a freshman quarterback to lead an NC State offense that, you know, before he took over was still out of sync and still, you know, not functioning at the level folks thought it was going to. And um, you can't expect him to do everything, but there has to be ways to get NC State's playmakers the ball more. I mean, you look just look at the box score, man, and you're looking at – you mentioned Casey's stat line. You have maybe one of the best slot receivers in the country. I, th I, th I think, you know, he has an argument to be the best slot receiver in the country. And you can't get him the ball downfield at all. He was open on one play, and CJ just missed him. So I'll, I'll give him that. And then last week, um, I know Doran mentioned that he was open downfield on one play, but they took a sack. So the opportunities are there, but in state – needs to generate more of them if they're not going to be able to connect on all of them, right? Like, KC, so far this year, I mean, after exploding for his 121-yard performance in the season opener, he has 53 yards, 25 yards, 40 yards, and 4 yards. It's not a good trend. That is not a good trend for when you have one of the most electric playmakers in the country. And then you're looking at, you mentioned Jordan um, Noah Rogers. You... You can't get him the ball anymore after, you know, that scripted first drive where he has a couple of big plays. The ta he has so much talent. They need to find ways to get more production out of him. Same goes for Justin Jolie, who has been phenomenal at points. He only had two catches for 15 yards. Wesley Grimes, only one catch for six yards. Yet when you throw, when you throw the ball only 20 times, there's only so many targets to go around, right, Noah? Like there's – you they NC State has so much talent – in the passing game right now that in the, the staff needs to figure out ways to get these playmakers the ball more often than they are right now. Or um, it's you're looking at a team that's going to severely limit its potential. I, I, I mean, wh where do you kind of see the offense going from here? Because it was, you know, a very, very poor showing. Yeah, I, I think that you can't get really much worse. Then what it did, I guess the turnovers can happen, and it goes way downhill from there. But, I mean, there's a lot of room for the offense to grow, but I don't know how much growth you can do in five days, six days of, of really practice and, and game and film and preparing for a new new opponent. Um, so it's kind of one of those things that you, this might be – we kind of went into the year, as you mentioned earlier, saying, all right, NC State's offense is going to lead this team down the stretch. You know, it's going to be what it is. The defense might have to be the one that carries this team – until they get to the bye week. I don't know if there's enough time to really overhaul the offense like they did last year on their bye week after playing Duke and we're a different team. I don't think they have the time to do it in the middle of game prep, Ethan. I think they have to get to week nine to really make significant changes to the offense. We'll see what they can do in um, the time being, make it easier for C.J. Bailey a little bit. Um, but I don't know how much you can really change on a game week. And if that's true – then things are going to be ugly, I think, for the next few weeks. Because I think it is unrealistic to ask this performance out of this defense every single week. I, I cannot compliment the defense enough for what it showed against Northern Illinois. I think it is going to be very challenging to replicate that for, you know, the next – until the bye week, until late October. That's going to be really challenging. Uh, it, I mean, it was challenging for defenses, the, the Wolfpack's defenses the past couple of years, and those defenses were more experienced and more talented. 
So I, I don't think you're going to be able to ask the same workload out of a Wolfpack defense as you have the past couple of years. If NC State's going to win games, they have to take a step forward. The schedule but before that bye week is pretty dang easy, Noah. They, they have an opportunity to rattle off some wins, but if they can't, but if they can't take a step forward offensively, those are all going to be, you know, just really grinding, you know, what is it, you know, the 60 minute stomach ache type of just um, game where it's not going to be pretty at all. And it just, it's just so tough because I guess we just need to fully recalibrate our expectations from where we were postseason because it looked like the offense had the ability to just be a lot prettier than it has the past few years. Is that it's looking like that's not the case right now. And um, I don't know, dude. I, I, <laughs> they need to show some sort of step forward and um, generate more explosive plays and find – receivers downfield and that's something the staff has talked about it's something they're trying to do it's just not clicking yet what's the key to that i'm not really sure at this point and i tend to agree with you i'm not sure if you can make a big sweeping change to the offense in just you know you know seven day seven days and a few days of practice i'm not sure if that's possible and you know the running game like it it's struggling still like it it it's I think still improving despite what the numbers said in this game. Like eventually it was pretty telegraphed that instant was just taking the air out of the ball. So there wasn't much, you know, they, like Northern Illinois was stacking the box and not allowing much, much rushing success to happen. Um, so some of these bad numbers are by just design almost. And it was just because NC State was trying to control the tempo, control the ball. But I think there's legitimate – very, very legitimate concerns that we're just continuing to see for this offense. I don't think it's showing clear, clear improvement. And um, I think it's looked its best when it's playing with urgency, when it's down, when it's trailing. When they do open things up, I think it shows some promise. But when they get a lead, they kind of just turtle up and it's not – and I just don't understand that personally. So we'll see how that – strategy changes against Wake Forest next week and in the weeks to come. But uh, right now the offense is not showing enough to um, complement the defense or um, win many games this season, in my opinion. All right. Usually we don't spend that much time talking about special teams, but we have to this week, right? I mean, NC State's special teams were a huge part of this win. First of all, Colin Smith, shout out to the Wolfpack's kickoff specialist. Still has not allowed a kick return this season. Super, super impressive year for him so far. Kanoa Vineset knocked through his only field goal attempt of the day after after missing his first one of the season against Clemson, bounced back, hit one. And then, um, no, I'm going to turn the floor over to you to talk about Caden Noonkester, who had maybe one of the best days of his career, maybe the best performance of the redshirt junior's career so far. I think it's up there. I think it's up there with one of the best punting performances we've seen at NC State in probably the last 20 years. I don't know. I wasn't alive past, you know, 24 years ago, so I can't tell you, can't speak to like what happened in the 70s and the 80s. But this guy had eight punts. Never a good sign I see your punter have eight punts. But seven of them went inside the 20, four of 50 yards and more, along with 58. He averaged 49 and at 8.8 yards a punt. He was the weapon that NC State's defense needed to help itself out. You talk about field position, and Dave Dorn loved to talk about complementary football, how one facet of the game impacts another. And NC State's defense was being on it, but it was partly because of Caden Newcatcher pinning Northern Illinois way back in its back of its um, back of its territory. Its average starting field position was eight, its own 18. It was inside its own 10 a few times. Like he was a difference maker in this game. And you obviously don't want to see your punter punt eight times, but when they do, having a weapon like that is really impressive. And kind of posed this question yesterday, but like, is NC State really, can it claim punter you soon with how it's kind of turning out punters? You had Trenton Gill, you have A.J. Cole, you've got Hayden Newcastle. You see the next in the league? I don't know, but he had a day that I think proved, not only to himself that he he's elite, we knew that he was a really good punter. Um, This might might be a day of, uh, you know, coming out party in his way of the future after NC State's done, if he can consistently put these kicks. But – he bailed the offense out big time and helped the defense in a major way. Yeah, NC State spent most of its uh, 
fourth quarter defending a seven point lead, right? And um, Northern Illinois possessed the ball four times and their average starting field position was their own 14 on those final three drives. So again, like you said, he was a weapon. He was really, really solid um, and just never opened the door for um, Northern Illinois to have much success. If the Huskies were going to score on the pack, they were going to have to drive the length of the field. And that was just such a huge, had such a huge impact on the game. So yeah, shout out to Caden. He was really, really, he was a game changer in this contest. Um, okay. It's time for our game ball segment. Every week we like to recognize a couple of individual performances. Last week we struggled to come up with anyone to highlight in this segment. Um, this week we have quite a few options. Um, Noah, give me your first game ball. Who do you want to recognize for their stand, standout play? I'm going to go with the leader on the defense. I'm going to go with Davin Van. Ten total tackles is a career high. He had three and a half tackles for loss, a career high. Two forced fumbles, a career high. Oh, we had a sack too. He was all over the place. Really, really good penetration from the defensive line. He led the way on that, and he deserves game ball for you know his first double-digit tackle performance, forcing turnovers. He's a guy who's consistently forced turnovers this year, and the and you know this was a different one. Was kind of a ball that ended up being a touchdown, I believe. But like he he's still looking to punch the ball out when he when he can get to it. Um, he did do that twice, and he's lived in the backfield. He forced two pick sixes back to back weeks. Now he's causing havoc in other ways. Um, this is a guy Ethan that's. We knew what he could do, but he's really proving it this year. Yeah, absolutely. He's in, he's incredible. He he was still super super disruptive, and you know I don't I don't think he was particularly more disruptive than he has been this season. It's just like I said close to the beginning of the show, they were in more favorable down and distances for the defense. They they were in downs where Northern Illinois had to drop back and pass, and that gave him the opportunity to put his head down, pass rush, and you know, really disrupt some things. And um, I thought he was also critical and really just stuffing a lot of those runs. And I thought he had a really, really good day. Um, I'm going to stay on the defensive side of the ball, and I'm going to shout out to Marcus Cooley. Um, to Marcus was one of the first recruits I ever covered on this job when he was a senior at Roseville High, just outside of Raleigh. And um, I saw him camp once, Noah, at NC State. And what really stood out to me about Tamarcus is – he would, he would, at the time, he was playing both sides of the ball for Rose Bowl, and he worked on both sides of the ball at this camp. He would do a receiver rep, and he wouldn't go back to the line. He'd go right back to the front of the line, and he'd take a DB rep. And he was working against the best receivers at that camp, working against the best DBs at that camp. He, he held offers from Oklahoma, Ole Miss, all these UNC big schools that um, – he didn't need to come in and prove anything in this camp, but he wanted to, and he competed. And ever since then, I've been a fan of him as a prospect. And um, he showed that same level of competition on Saturday. Three passes defended on five targets, man. Come on. He had a great performance. The you know game-ending interception as well. Um, he was phenomenal, I thought. It, nickel is a really hard pl position to play in the pack defense. You're having to defend a lot of – a lot of space on that field, having to defend some fast slot receivers. And he, he did a really good job. I, I think he is absolutely deserving of a game ball with just the way he covered and the way he stepped in for, um you know, Jihad Carter, who started the previous four games. Uh, anyone else you'd like to shout out and recognize from this game? Yeah, but still the defensive side of the ball. We'll go Devon Marshall, six total tackles. He had a pick, and his interception was really good. He stayed, you know, stride for stride with the receiver the whole way down the field on a deep shot, made the pick with four minutes left, um, you know, in one of the turnovers they forced. I think he's been really impressive, and he played 40 snaps um, against Northern Illinois. I think we could see him more. I mean, they're they're not afraid to give him snaps. He's proved himself in the last few games. And he's a guy I really want to see out there a lot more at Corn. Yeah, he's looked really good. I, I don't see how you can't play him more. I, he, he has just been really, really good in coverage so far this year. Um, I, I mean, I feel like we basically gave a game ball to Caden Nooncaster. So what would you say? Like Caden Nooncaster, you get a game ball without a doubt. Um, I am going to stick on the defense for the final um, game ball of the day. And um, I'm going to cheat and recognize two linebackers because Caden Fordham and Sean Brown both – um, they combined for 26 total tackles. They led the team with um, Fordham had 14, Brown had 12. Both career highs 
for the linebackers. Um, the linebacker position has been, you know, a spot on the field where they've been pretty criticized so far this year. And I thought they both stepped up and had a great day. Sean Brown also had a few quarterback hurries to go along with his sack and a tackle for loss. Caden Fordham had a sack and two tackles for loss. I thought they were very, very solid. I thought, again, when you're in more favorable down and distances, they were able to use what Sean Brown does well on the field, which is, you know, be really, really fast and hit people really, really hard. I think, you know, when he's a pass rusher, he looks a lot better on the field than when he's having to defend, you know, second and short, third and short. And um, he was flying around the field, flying around the backfield, and I'm um, really disrupting their passing offense. So, um, you know, shout out to them for a bounce back day for the linebacker core, which, you know, is all, as we always talk about the engine that gets this defense going. So when they bounce back, the defense bounce back. So there's always going to be a direct correlation to that. But um, yeah, I mean, shout out to the defense as a whole. Should we give, should we give that whole side of the defense? of the ball, just a, a, a big game ball, a massive game ball. I think they, I think they deserve it, man. Yeah. I think Tony Gibson deserves one. And here's right. why this is a guy whose unit looked really bad last week. I mean, we, we say it like Clemson destroyed them and it was quick and in a hurry. He had a task of not only fixing that, getting his guys rallied up all week in practice and then having them execute on on Saturday. And he did. You Dave Dorn called Tuesday and Wednesday, bloody Tuesday, bloody Wednesday. Defense was flying around. Offense was too, but they really wanted that defense to be nasty and physical and tough. Tony Gibson unlocked something in this unit, and I think now it's important for them not to relax, not rest on their laurels, and, and come back out with the same vengeance as DK's offense said. They got to do it times 10 next week because they know what happens when they do. Um, so I think he deserves one just for his response leading this unit. He's you know one of the highest paid defensive coordinators in college football, and he proved his worth. In, in the way that he could take a defense that was paper thin at Clemson and and really won them this game against Northern Illinois. Totally agree. All right, folks, that's it for today's show. Um, thank you all for tuning in to our recap of the win over Northern Illinois. We will be back in a few days to preview NC State's October 5th. Oh, my gosh, we're already in October, Noah. Matchup against Wake Forest. We'll have plenty of stuff up again on the Wolfpacker.com. Go check it out. And um, yeah, we'll be back with our preview show on Thursday and we will talk to you all then. Thanks, folks. See you soon.